<laughs> you won't be the first and you definitely won't be the last. Good. Good. <laughs> this is Lady Maya. Hello, you guys. We are here with another podcast. You guys, we have a special guest, Mr. N. David. Okay, so I've listened to his demo. I'm super excited. You guys are going to get a treat today. He is a fellow Philian. Uh, and so we were just chatting it up. You know how I do. And we just had a blast just kind of going down memory lane and, and seeing how much we actually had a god we had so much <laughs> but you wouldn't believe it but i'm gonna let and allow him to explain who he is what he does and why hello beloved hello lady maya how are you <laughs> i'm great sir oh, i'm great you look great Thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I appreciate your your time, effort, and your energy in this in this process. So oh, well, thanks for having me today. Oh, thank you for glad to be here. here with you on this Memorial Day and this Memorial Day weekend. Although it's miserable out here in Philly, <laughs> we're having a little sun today. We're looking for the sun, you know. Right. But, yes. Uh, finally and stopped raining the last couple of days. You know, it has. It has. It has. But you know what? We're look, as long as we're smiling, we can bring our own sunshine, correct? Absolutely. <laughs> and keep that sunshine. Bring it with you. Because I got a drummer who has a cloud over his head all the time. You know, so I like to bring the sunshine. <laughs> And it's only better with the sunshine, right? I'm uh, yeah. telling you. Okay, so I would love to know, sir, what made you start singing? Well, uh, geez, we can go back to, you know, I grew up with a piano in the house mm -hmm. and my mother played and we were like, I don't know, you know, there was a show, I don't know if you remember, you saw reruns of All in the Family. I loved it. Everybody sits around the piano singing. And uh, so my, my house was like that. My mother my, would play, my father, my sister, and myself would stand around the piano and sing. My mother had all this sheet music and she'd play. So at a, at a very early age, I started singing uh, with my mother on piano, you know. Oh. And uh, so one thing led to another. And, uh, you know, in school, I went into the glee club or the chorus. And, you know, I didn't think it was cool, but I wanted to sing. So I did it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, Kept you I, busy. <laughs> I took up uh, some instruments. I tried clarinet. I tried bass. I tried piano. You know, but um, actually, I wasn't good at practicing all of that. That's why I admire these musicians who just have put this practice and. You know, it's like another limb, their guitar or their saxophone, you know, and they just playing all the time. Me, I was just singing all the time. And that came easy. It's too hard to, to, although I learned how to play bass, you know, and I started playing bass early because I was too scared to just stand up there and sing. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't like playing the horn or the sax because I hated sucking on that reed. You know, you had to lick the reed and the clarinet or the saxophone. I didn't like that. I love the saxophone. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's a nice, sexy instrument too. It, hey, that was the instrument. It was yeah. it was good because I was bullied all the time, so I could use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it, it took a lot of work to learn how to play that. And piano mm -hmm. was too heavy to carry around. Although this bass in, in those days, when I was playing this Fender bass, it was pretty heavy. Mm. It gave me such a pain in my shoulder. Such a pain in my shoulder. How to get a needle about how to get a needle big. about this big that they stuck in my shoulder. They stuck in my shoulder. Actually, he said to see the worker. He said to see the worker. Actually, it worked. And, uh, actually, it so worked. That was a long time ago. So once I got enough confidence, once I got enough confidence, got to put the bass down. Got a real bass player. I don't understand. 
not I'm really do that. I really do that. Definitely, definitely. Definitely, okay. definitely. Okay. But it was like a crutch. But so, it was like a crutch at first. It was like a crutch yeah. at first. Yeah. Play yeah. Play it was hard to play bass. Mm-hmm. It was hard to play bass and sing at the same time. Mm-hmm. Anyway. It is. It's it's difficult. It you know, it's, I think that is a you know, I think, talent. You know, if you if you can do both of them, it's like yeah. walking and chewing gum at the same time. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh wow. Okay. All right. So basically, um, we understand the history behind it. What are you finding as far as your singing is coming? Well, uh, so, you know, from that, I started playing. Well, when I went to college, I played fraternity parties. You know, I was fronting a big band that had horns and, you know, was playing some of that Chicago. You, you, you spent some time in Chicago, I understand, right? Yes, yes. So you remember the band Chicago? Big bands in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love those. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we were playing that kind of music, Chicago, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and you know, and I was fronting that band. I had four horns and an organ, and you know, you know. And so that was cool. And um, from fraternity parties, um, you know, I think we were making a uh, twenty-five dollars a piece, you know, to play a fraternity party. And okay. I got offered a hundred dollars. I'll never forget this. A hundred dollars to. Um, oh no, that was that was probably before that. Um, I got paid. I got offered for around forty dollars to play a uh, an anniversary party. So that got me into. I was making twice as much, almost forty dollars. Set at twenty two fifty, it actually was. You know, so we uh, started playing. I, I got with another trio, and I fronted that band and started playing private parties. So hmm. that paid a lot more than playing fraternity parties and drunk people going crazy and throwing stuff <laughs> got a high like i don't you know. have to clean it up okay <laughs> get my money and go all right <laughs> i just wanted to make sure i didn't get hit by a beer bottle or something you know those days it was let's pretty not crazy. let's not do that <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, i started so private parties then was yeah. became really what i was doing Mm-hmm. Playing top forty, and you know, I always lean toward R and B music. <clears throat> okay, um, so what are you doing now? So now, and that's what I, I want to tell people, all the young people also that are listening to, never give up, do what you want. I always loved blues, I always loved the blues, you know. So R and B, you know, I loved that. I, you know, I went, I was always growing up. I went to Overbrook High School, you know, it was a very diversified. Uh, a diverse kind of uh, you know uh, place to grow up and all kinds of people and um, and I and I had a lot of soul in, at an early age you know and uh, so I leaned toward R and B uh, and and then blues but I couldn't play blues in those days because you had to play you know what the people wanted to hear and you know s- sort of like more mm-hmm. of the top forty and the standards and stuff like that mm-hmm. so. You know, over the years, I started uh, to play less. You know, I didn't want to do weddings or corporate events as much anymore, and wanted to record some blues music. So that's what I'm doing now. And uh, you know, it's not as much money, but uh, it's not, the money is okay. I made the money. Now, now I want to do what I always loved. So mm, I'm recording yeah. some blues music and playing some uh, blues festivals. You know when this whole thing opens up again you know the yes. world mm-hmm. and that's going to be exciting for you definitely yeah are you looking forward to it yes absolutely always looking forward to play i've been in the studio recording some things like the song you just heard and mm-hmm. um but it'll be nice to get out and play again for yeah. sure Oh, that's going to be so much fun. So much fun. Okay. Okay. So what is the message? You know, music has to have that message to just grab you. What is that message? The message is, uh, I got a couple messages. First of all, you know, what I'm doing now is that as I got a little older, you know, to never give up do what you want to do, do what you love. 
and keep at it. Do what you have to do to survive. And then as you get to a place in your life where you can do what you want, it's never too late. Do what you want. Hopefully you're able to call your own shots at a certain point and do what you want. Yeah. The other message is um, I was scared to death at, at a young and younger to, to be fronting a band. That's why I played bass in the beginning. I was too scared to just sing. And even to this day, sometimes, you know, you get nervous. But I, I always I, I had to force myself to do things. Mm -hmm. So you have to put yourself into a situation where it might be uncomfortable, might be scary, but you have to go up there and act you know and put on the performer's face and and just get up there and force yourself to do it yes you know? no i understand that one definitely yeah. just getting the chance to talk to um, my mayan tribe you know that's always that's always yeah. like okay what are you gonna say now <laughs> i'm not exactly yeah. sure but that's okay, you know, um, as long as everyone is having fun and, and, and being respectful and different things like that. But when they see your passion, though, you know, when they see that and how you're giving it your all and yeah. who you are behind the voice, who oh, yeah. you are behind the, you know, behind closed doors, they they can see that it radiate radiates you know that's to that them. so important you need to have that yeah. passion and that drive you can't give that to somebody they you yeah. have to have that yeah. and then it becomes whatever you're doing becomes believable mm -hmm. and that's important to yeah. if you believe what you're doing you're sincere about what you're doing and you're passionate about it people will feel that yes. and that that goes a long way yes doesn't it i mean i mean it, it, then it, it makes our hearts smile right because they feel it you can just yeah. tell you oh, know especially yeah. th look the mask if once they come off now those 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 faces you could tell the whole is everything that's going to be on their face it's going to tell the truth you know it's just like yeah Ooh, yeah i like this i yeah. like that yeah. I, I felt that way with your song i was just like oh, great Oh, that's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely felt that song. And, you know, when I watched it myself, I mean, there was a time when I couldn't, you know, watch myself or listen to myself. I, you know, it was hard, you know, because mm -hmm. you're picky, you know, you're the your worst critic. You're your own worst critic, you know. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, I can dig it. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I love that. Okay, yeah. so with your... Like you have, oh my goodness, you've done everything. Thank you for your service, definitely, all oh, day. Well, um, we didn't talk about you were in South Carolina. Yes, I'm in South uh, Carolina. Yeah, and, you know, we were saying earlier when we were chatting that yeah. when you say thank you for my service, happy Memorial Day, and that we're in South Carolina. Last time I was in South Carolina, I was in the Marine Corps in mm -hmm. Paris Island, South Carolina. And then from there, North Carolina, Camp Lejeune. You know? I was a mm. cook. I was a cook in the Marine Corps. Really? Oh, <laughs> that was my art coming out. Wow! Yeah. Do you it's still cook? Color. I was. I was great at eggs. Eggs was my special. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, sir. Yeah. <laughs> my husband does all the cooking. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm good. All right. <laughs> Oh, gosh, that is great. Okay, so what can we look forward to with your voice, sir? Well, I have um, some other things. I'm working on some, you know, music. And they're, they're, I'm, they're, I did a couple original songs, but, you know, I'm covering some, like, songs that are maybe like 50 years old or something, old blues tunes. That I, like even what you heard, blues is my business. That's, yeah, that's a yeah. old tune from maybe 25 years ago. That Etta James actually did that tune. Um, uh, to the, the lady who sang, you might be familiar with that song, At Last. You, you, you know, At last, you know, that's right. my love has come, come along. along. My love. <laughs> I love me some editing. She recorded this uh, Blues of My Business. 
Yeah, so she recorded that song first, like in the 90s or something, you know. And uh, and some mm. uh, I heard it on The Sopranos when they were had that show on, if you remember The Sopranos. Uh, I heard yeah. it on a uh, commercial. They were going through a break and played this song. And I said, oh, I got to record that someday. So uh, we did it finally, you know. And uh, so that's what we get looking forward to, some more music coming out. Uh, you know a lady um, um, uh, from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, uh, lady Rhina, Rhea. Ray, Ray, lady Ray J? Yeah. Lady yes. Ray J. Yes. I love her. That's my she big did. sis. Oh, I love oh, her. Oh, yeah, really? Oh, well, she was, she loved my stuff and played it. She, I did a version of St. Louis Blues with, with like, Four horns, so that's a big, uh, big song. And I was, I mean, that song was written probably in about 1930 or something, but um, mm -hmm. it's been a popular song over the years. And she, I was so honored that she played St. Louis Blues from her on her show in St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. So she's in St. Louis, so they played, she played that, she played Blues My Business, it was cool. Yes. Um, and uh, so He's Lady awesome. Ray Ray was really nice. She she asked me, what else do you have? What else do you have? So right. it was cool. I mean, your what stuff is so, it, but it's so like spirit tone. Like, you know, you, you know, the spirit is in there. You just got to like grip it up mm -hmm. and just eat it up and just mm -hmm. go around with it. You know? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Oh my goodness! I can't. I can't wait. I'm gonna have to tell her, like, "Hey, girl, what's up?" I'm gonna have to send you a, a cheese. Yeah, tell Lady Ray J um, that uh, we talked, and I appreciate her. And she played, um, you know, St. Louis blues, which was unbelievable. That was mm. St. Louis, and she played blues in my business, also that uh, you just. Yes. Uh, I didn't I'm have excited. a video at that time. I just finished the video of that. Yes, so, I love your video. Yeah, you I, represented SEPTA, which was definitely Pennsylvania. <laughs> the whole Pennsylvania feel to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to send you a Philly cheesesteak down there. Oh, uh, don't talk about it, sir. Yeah. Don't talk about uh, it. I miss uh, the Philly pretzels, though. Oh, my uh, goodness. You can't. Yeah. I mean, like, not everybody's pretzels are the same. Philly pretzels is a whole different thing. Like, you don't yeah. know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. You could freeze those and still eat those good. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, so this is this is so amazing. Can you give us just a smidge, a little bit, a little bit of blues is my bit. Oh, wow. Well. well, I did a uh, Muddy Waters was, uh, you know, a great, great blues artist. And uh, I'm doing... Uh, he did a song called um, uh, Hoochie Coochie Man. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm doing that over. And it went, uh, Gypsy woman told my mother before I was born. Got a boy child coming. Gonna be the son of a gun. Gonna make pretty women jump and shout. And the world wanna know what this is all about. Cause I'm here. Everybody knows I'm here. Well, I'm the coochie coochie man. Everybody knows I'm here. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> That's enough of that. <laughs> I don't know what that sounded like, but uh, you put me on the spot. I don't want to. Hey, you know down. what? I'm on it, sir. I'm on it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm on it. I'm on it. It was uh, good. Uh, coochie Yes. Yeah. Huh? Me, you sound pretty good yourself. And so what? You you have a band too? You would think, right? Mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> I used to sing way back when. I used to be a writer way back when. But oh. I, I don't do that anymore. But I'm really, really... Look, just talking to you just kind of awoken something in me. <laughs> oh, good. That's good. I'm honored about that. And that's what we talked about, to have that drive and that passion. I like can't stop, even if I wanted to. I got God put stuff in my head that I gotta go out and do. I yeah. gotta do. It. You know, it's like it's like crazy. I I waste money a lot of times because I, but I have this idea. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I wrote a song 
um, not to get off the thing, but real quick, and oh, you no, can definitely. see it on YouTube sometime. But I, I wrote a song, uh, I guess, in the uh, probably the mid '90s, called. And at that time, there was a, a zombie movie that was popular in the '60s, black and white, called *Night of the Living Dead*. And in the '90s, they remade it in color. So I wrote a song called "Doing the Zombie." And uh, that's when Night of the Living Dead was about these people come back from the, you know, zombies walking around, you know. And I wrote a song called Doing the Zombie. And Chubby Checker, if you heard of him, you guys Yes, know. I met him yeah, on yeah. his tour bus. Oh, yeah. And I sat in his tour bus for like two hours. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, he's famous for the twist and the pony and twist again and yes. all kinds of stuff. And uh, he recorded yes. uh, Doing the Zombie. And actually, that was my first, uh, I became a published artist with ASCAP from that song. And uh, I get royalties on that every Halloween, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't even remember what my point was at this point. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I re so I... I um, wrote that song, Chubby recorded it, and zombies since then, you know, the zombies have just become huge with The Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead and all these zombie shows, you know, so it's like, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting royalties from that and it's beautiful. I redid it with a young guy uh, last year, a couple of years ago, actually, right before the pandemic. And, it's on YouTube, doing the zombie, Eddie Davis. You can check it out sometime. It's fun. It's fun to have a video. Chubby will be when Chubby did it in the 90s. We weren't doing videos. It was just an audio. You know, it wasn't a video yet. And my first royalty check, Lady Maya, I got now they direct deposit stuff. In those days, <laughs> they'd mail you a check. Right. So I was so excited. I got a check in the mail from California. There's an envelope in California with a royalty check. I opened it up. It was a beautiful check, perforated check. I, I, my hand, I swear this is true. I opened it up. The check was for one cent, one penny. <laughs> <laughs> my first royalty check was for one cent. And I That's framed. what you got to pray for over the check and make sure, let, let this just explode and, and you know multiply right. <laughs> and multiply zero. pray for some zeros on that right? <laughs> on, on the other side of that one <laughs> yeah. yeah so when I framed that uh, check and I have that in a frame no, I first wrote a check for one cent mm. and mm -hmm. I never cashed it so I must have screwed their books up you know <laughs> <laughs> they just wrote it off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's right. So oh, uh, wow. yeah, that was that was fun to do, and I and this young guy Marcus White did a great job on that song, and I took him out in the woods and got some dancers and got a makeup artist, and you'll check it out sometime on YouTube doing the zombie. So what by is Eddie Cruz, you know. So that's uh, where my claim to fame, becoming a published <laughs> artist with that song. Not will, listen. If it didn't will, happen then, it'll happen now. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I wrote beautiful love songs, and that's the song that came out and got me published. So you never know where it's coming from. Mm -mm. No, I know where we're talking. Why we're talking about God putting stuff yes. in my head. So yes. I had seen, I had seen the commercial. I had read something about the zombies. I'm redoing Night of Living Dead. I got the idea, I went into the studio, I recorded I got a couple of musicians that helped me out with it and uh, ended up chubby hearing it and wanted to record it. And I became a, a published artist from that song, first first song. Wow. Yeah. We need and, to talk, sir, we need to talk, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we need to do a duet, you know? We will definitely, definitely be conversing on some, some projects. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Oh my goodness. You've lived such a very rich life. Like just the, oh. you know, just your experiences and who you got the chance to, to talk to, be around, you know, to, to actually experience is you know, like, 
no other, no other. Well, Lady Maya, I, and that's the theme of this show is that I put myself into these situations, even if I was thought I was nuts, if somebody thought I was nuts, hey, I want to do a song called Doing the Zombie. Somebody, you know, I finally found, you know, people that didn't think I was nuts, you know what I mean? And, you know, put myself into getting in touch with Chubby and mm -hmm. meeting him and having him hear the song and wanting to record it. I mean, so it's the drive and the passion that you were talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. You, you need to have that. You do, you do. I think that's the only thing that really drives you or keeps you on that road, you know, well, keeps you motivated. Yeah, sure. I mean, I know great talents that are going to waste, unfortunately, because they don't really push themselves. I mean, they're, sure. they're great, great musician, great singer, mm -hmm. but they just don't have the drive. Right. So that, that's important. That of course, with all of that, you also need the luck is one thing. And then you also, besides the luck, you need the magic. So that with the zombie, that that happened. I had the luck, I had the drive, I had the luck, and then I had the magic with mm. Chubby. So, you know, that happened that way. And uh, you just got to keep on pushing. Old impressions tune. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is, this is amazing. Old, this is amazing. That's an old Pointer Sisters tune. I'm so excited. <laughs> And I just can't hide it. <laughs> I know, I know, oh my goodness, I know. you! I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. No, I want you, want you. you. <laughs> yes, I'm an old soul too. <laughs> no, it's great. Love I it. Feel it. Definitely. This is, oh my goodness, sir. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure you guys have the link to his video. On top of that, I'm going to um, see if not only I can get the other video for the zombie, doing the zombie. I'm going to oh, try to yeah. do that as well. So if I can link them all together, get you guys to like t check it out and see what, what Brother Eddie is all about there. Yeah. You know, you would understand then, you know, you would kind of see that journey kind of come into fruition and that's a blessing all in itself. Um, certainly, certainly, certainly. Okay, so, sir, my Mayan tribe needs some motivation, sir. If you can just speak a word over the Mayan tribe, the floor is yours. The Maya tribe needs some motivation. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Well, uh, the motivation is to do, you know, what you love, what you feel, and listen to this, the universe. Listen to what's speaking to you, whether it's God or the universe or a feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. don't, don't throw it off, okay? I've I've heard so many things in my head that I actually pursued. Rather, would people would say, "Man, well, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pursue that. You know, it's crazy. You know, I can't do that. Can't do this." So, the motivation is to hear those voices, get that feeling, and go do it. Call a great musician, you know, to help you out if you if you don't know. You know, so, you know, I got some lyrics. I got a melody in my head. I called a keyboard player right away, and I and he didn't think I was nuts. You know, which mm -hmm. was cool. You know, and uh, so you know, find yourself some great musicians if you're a singer. But you could be a painter. You could be a musician. You could be anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would find that uh, drive within yourself and listen to the voices. Listen to your heart. Listen to yourself and and just you got to follow through that's what it's all about that's the motivation to motivate yourself <laughs> you know <laughs> nobody's going to do it for you you can't wait to be discovered i don't want to discover anybody anymore you know like you got to do it yourself yeah you know a diy right do it yourself, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Ooh, I'm going to take that one in for myself, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I don't know if you need that so much. You you seem, you know, blessed in your own way with such a beautiful personality and outgoing style and a warm, beautiful person. I mean, you have what it takes to do whatever you want to do, girl. I can tell that for sure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. I appreciate it so your much. Vibe, your vibe is beautiful. Oh, I That's try. I, I, yeah. I think I do everything with my heart. Yes. You know? And it shows. And I can't help myself. And, yeah. <laughs> Don't change. <laughs> Thank you. Well, my Mayan tribe, you know it's about that time. Okay, so um, if you want to reach out to Brother Eddie, Eddie, how can they get a hold of you, sir? Well, my website is uh, www.eddiedavismusic.com. That's E-D-D-I-E-D-A-V-I-S-M-U-S-I-C.com. EddieDavisMusic.com and you can check out some music on there and uh, uh, my phone number is 610-664-8553 610-664-8553 and um, you can contact me either way you know it's good to email me they can email me through the website and uh, okay, I'd be glad to send you a link to uh, doing the zombies so you don't have to start searching for it or anything. Oh, yeah. I want to send you a link to that. Yes. We ought to definitely stay in touch. Yes, completely. Okay, so you do that because I'm definitely going to put that in the yeah. description. Okay, so you guys, um, you know and um, everything. So um, if you want to get on the um, Living Your Best Life with Lady Maya podcast or the radio show or the TV show, please go ahead and email me. That is going to be at admin at ladymaya.com. That's M-Y-Y-A. And you know why? Because your home girl is special. I will talk to you guys later.